Hey guys, so I've been planning on filming this video for a while and it is just supposed to be a little chit chat start of conversation with everyone that's kind of interested in makeup. Um, mainly interested in Pat McGrath Labs, which is obviously a super high end luxury um, makeup brand. I'm personally obsessed with it. Um, I have been since I got my first order from them, which was like a full face of Pat McGrath Labs. I actually posted this video on this channel. My first mothership was the Bronze Seduction, which I feel like is most people's like either first or the introduction, or it's like the most popular one that everyone used to get before all the other like pink ones came along. Like that one was really stunning and it was like so amazing for every day and it was just so good and it was so stunning. But I recently have noticed a bit of a downturn for Pat McGrath. I just wanted to kind of start that conversation, but in order to film this video, I'm actually going to use a try to do like a full face of Pat McGrath. I've actually ran out of a lot of things. I don't have the foundation anymore because I'm either trying to like go through foundations that I already have in my collection or buy new ones that I've never tried before for like curiosity purposes only. And so by the time I get round to it again, like it's gonna take a while, but I personally love that foundation. It's one of my favorites. I don't have a primer. I think the primer is mediocre at best. It's fine. It's not offensive. It's just not that useful. So I just have a skincare routine down and I'm just gonna use what I have, which is a bunch of other things. As you guys know, the Pat McGrath Labs Concealer is one of my favorite concealers of all time. I have, oh, it's falling. I have the shades L1 and L5, I guess one, well, I wanted shades that were pretty far apart, but not too far apart where I kind of can't use, I can either mix them, or I can just use this one on the eyes, this one all over the face, or I can like do winter, summer, or I can mix them together for like an in-between shade, which I thought was the best way to go about this. So if you are my shade, as you can see, this one's just a little bit too dark and this one's just a little bit too light. But if I mix them together, or I just use them together, they kind of create like a beautiful full face. And I remember using this concealer like all over my face um, because instead of foundation sometimes, because it's just so good. I am wondering if it's a little bit expired. I mean, the colors are separating a little bit. Like it definitely looks darker up top than it looks down bottom. I feel like it's always had this smell. Like, it's fine, I'll just use it, it's okay. I'll actually live to tell the tale, hopefully. Um, I'm just gonna use this one on like the high points of my face. This is such like a old school makeup look. For some reason my skin's breaking out today, it's been so good for the last like, I look wild. It's been kind of nice for the last while, um, but it's, acting up today again. I don't know why. Sometimes my skin's just a little bit sensitive to something that I use. I don't know. I try to keep my skincare the same though, just because my skin's so temperamental right now. So I'm trying to kind of keep the skincare the same, but something clearly still irritated it. I'm not going to do a crazy backstory on Pat McGrath. I feel like you can find those videos on the internet where people kind of just go through like the rise and fall of Pat McGrath Labs and they'll give you all the back end, all the, you know, every single launch and everything. Today I just want to like just have a casual discussion. But it was started by Patricia Ann McGrath, which is obviously Pat McGrath, who's a British makeup artist. The brand was started in 2015 and then by 2019, just only four years later, it was a $1 billion company, uh, which I think is incredible timing honestly to make a billion in four years it just goes to show just how beloved this brand was pretty much from the get-go this is looking so crazy right now you love gonna be looking crazy right now it looks like i'm like underpainting right now which i mean kind of but except i'm not putting anything on top every time i look at myself in the viewfinder i'm like wow i look crazy so it's a um super like hyper high-end luxury line i feel like well I actually feel like it was at the time. All of the makeup would be like super expensive. It was like unattainable. It was amazing. And I feel like it was kind of one of those makeup brands where they wouldn't launch a lot, but when they did, it would sell out immediately because people were like saving their money for the launches that would come out. They kind of knew that it would be one eyeshadow palette um, a year from when she released the first Mothership palette. The first Mothership was obviously Mothership 1 and it was the one with the like cool tone shades with the pop of blue. Um, and the pop of gold and that was revolutionary. I actually think that to this day is one of my favorite of her palettes. It's super versatile. You can really make like a daytime look. You can make a, a more dramatic look. Like you can, it's very well spread out and the quality is amazing. I get why that was the palette that like, first of all was first and I get why at the time when it was created around the 2015, 2016, when it was all like Morphe, the orange palettes, like I get why it made a buzz personally. But at the time I obviously wasn't buying Pat McGrath. I was 15, um, I was barely wearing makeup and I also did not have enough pocket money saved up for a 125 pound eyeshadow palette because that would have been crazy. So as you can see, this concealer is obviously a lot darker, but it kind of works in like an underpainting way. 
Except like I said, I'm not gonna be painting over this. I'm kind of just gonna wear it like this. Of my skin acting up, I think it's nice to get a little bit more coverage today. And these can see this last really well. They look really natural, but they are full coverage and they have just like a natural skin finish, but they are, as you can see, very high coverage. That looks a little bit less insane. This is also pre the like rise of indie brands who then would release a bunch of like multi-chrome palettes and like dimensional glitters and I feel like that was really not that popular. We had a lot of like blinding eyeshadows but it was more just like a smooth metallic than it would be like a super dimensional like 3D looking glitter which is what the Mothership palettes had provided. They were multi-chromey or at least duochrome -y. They were like 3D looking. They were super impressive for what we had at the time. So I feel like it was just revolutionary for what it was. I'm gonna use some cream stuff. I don't have anything from Pat McGrath. So I'm just gonna use whatever cream products I have, which is probably gonna be Merit today and a little bit of Tarte. I'm just gonna use the Merit um, bronzer in Quince. It's my favorite cream product right now. I think it just looks so good. But yes, it was revolutionary at the time. I think the color story was even more revolutionary um, because like I said, everything was so orange and warm toned and that was really, like if you're doing eyeshadow, it had to be a warm toned, like orange brassy shade. It couldn't be cool tone. No one was doing cool tones because cool tones were out because it wasn't the early 2000s anymore. Um, no one wanted a frosty eyeshadow look anymore and then Pat McGrath came out with this eyeshadow palette and it was like oh wow like you can make cool tones look really amazing and they don't have to look super like Y2K they can just at the time it was just like a really classy like amazing look I'm like sweating as well it's so hot in here I had to turn off my AC so that was amazing that came out obviously then we followed with a bunch of different motherships one a year and then we amped it up to obviously more than one a year clearly because we're on like Mothership 12 by now and it's only been 80 years. So I think we've had a few launches that maybe overlapped in years, but it was kind of like an event. When there was a Pat McGrath launch, it was an event. It wasn't like she pumped out stuff every month or every week or, you know, it was a few launches a year just to kind of give you a curated, like this is what Mother Pat wants people to use like it was like really just a gift from her to be like this is what i believe in and it's what i think you should be using and everyone was really behind that hype like if she announced a new product you knew it was going to become your new holy grail whether it was an eyeshadow palette a mascara an eyeliner a lip liner a lipstick everything was super hyped up and it was super like an event it was a launch it was an event now everything would be sold out pretty much as she would launch it it would um oh this is the Tarte Maracuja. You guys know how much I love this thing. It's in the shade Rose and it's the like putty blush that they've released. And I think the formula is so gorgeous. The shade Rose is the perfect pink. It's not a Barbie pink. It's not a baby pink. It's not a blue base pink. It is just like the perfect. This is how I blush. This is, this is how I blush. Once again, if you're my shade and you're looking for something like this, that just looks like the way you would blush. This is the shade. Um, and they do have two other shades of this one, deeper one and then one kind of like, I think it's more blue based. Everything was literally sold out from Pat McGrath the moment she would launch it and then it wouldn't come back for ages. I remember like with the bronze seduction, it became everyone's holy grail Pat McGrath palette and you couldn't get that thing. Um, I remember I got it somehow I think there must have been a restock and then I got a bunch of stuff, but I remember it was out of stock for ages on Sephora, on Pat's website. It was just sold out everywhere. I'm just going to set the bit of concealer that I got um, on my eyelid with just the Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder. And I'm just gonna kind of set, I think everywhere else, just a little bit because I'm getting so sweaty. I just know that this is gonna like slide off my face in a minute. She came out with the bronzers, which I think were a little bit too late. This is another thing. Like I feel like some things we asked for for ages and they just didn't come out. And obviously by then you kind of have your own favorites. These bronzers are like so good. So good. This is the shade Nude Honey. It's a very popular shade for people of my skin tone, but she released a super wide range of bronzers. The formula is amazing. It really reminds me of the blushes. Super easy to blend out, buildable. It doesn't cause a scene. See, it just blends itself out. Like I don't like my bronzer to cause a scene on my face. It's not like, you're not the main character. You're just here to help everything else along. And this is what these bronzers do. I don't even have to really do much with this. Like as you guys can see, you just stamp it on 
stamp it all around but I feel like these bronzes took so long these should have come like three motherships sooner um if not four like I feel like the moment she said repeating the same pretty much pink mothership every year it was time for this and it just hadn't come and I feel like they didn't make as much of a bang as I thought they were going to I felt like I was gonna see like every video be like oh these are the best new bronzes of all time and I feel like whoever reviewed them said they were good but they also said they were really expensive and they did say that they came a little bit too late and I just had to agree but I have it I love it I use it but it was just a little bit too late and I feel like people had already been turned off the brand with how many like similar motherships were coming out that people weren't even checking for what Pat McGrath was releasing so I feel like this just slipped under the radar a little bit I have the Bridgerton Divine Blush and Glow Trio Love at First Blush which I think comes with amazing looking um blushes like these two are my perfect shade I'm actually gonna mix them together today I sometimes just go for this one which is Nymphette and then this one is Cherish and this is Venus Nectar which is one of the most popular highlight shades that she has but I'm just gonna mix Nymphette and Cherish together because I feel like that kind of looks like what my Tarte blush looked like i like to layer things up see that looks so good her blushes as well i feel like her blushes really made a stamp on the beauty community and by made i meant left like i feel like people were honestly obsessed with these blushes for so long they are so expensive but they are so good i know it looks like i overdid it with the blush but please leave me to it um blush is like the first thing to start leaving your face and i just need it to stay on through filming today once i start blending things in it all sorts itself out don't worry this powder it's the sublime perfection blurring under eye powder i use it everywhere even though it's tiny it's clearly just for the under eye but it's tiny and expensive for it's only four grams of product it kind of reminds me of like a finishing powder from hourglass just less kind of glowy um but it has a similar vibe where it just blurs everything together and it sets in the most beautiful way and yeah it's just for the under eyes but that is not how i use it i just kind of blur everything together with it or i just use it to set if i'm feeling like my skin is looking too oily or I even use it for touch-ups i think that's like an amazing way to use it i'm actually going to go in with the highlight gently i think it looks a little bit too dark on me sometimes if i overdo it but if I just kind of gently blur it out, I think we can kind of get somewhere. I'm going to use Refi on the eyebrows. I think people started noticing a bit of a problem with Pat when the launches started becoming too regular. We would get more and more things, which obviously as a business you want to scale up. But I feel like the reason why Pat was so popular and, you know, so coveted was because... It was expensive, but you almost had time to save up your money and figure out what you wanted to do and what you wanted to get. Cause you knew there would be like one mothership and then maybe like two or three launches in between that would be kind of smaller and you could figure things out. Whereas now she was releasing just a bunch of stuff. And not only was she releasing a bunch of stuff, the stuff started looking very similar. So the last few motherships, I'll try and put them up on the screen, are all kind of pinky golds and that's fine, but people have already spent 125 pounds on each of those palettes and they're starting to look super similar whereas compared to the first few that she released i mean we had like an autumnal one we had the cool toned one we had the bronze seduction like there were there was a variety in all the shades which was amazing to see i'm actually going to use one of the valentine's day palettes i still haven't used this one a lot i've gone into the mattes a little bit but i haven't used the shimmers and these are like a cute just like a soft glam look so i feel like people are starting to get really turned off and anytime instagram account like trend mood would post about a new launch you could predict what the comments were going to look like just based on looking at the launch if it was another pinky eyeshadow palette people would just say you know we've already spent x amount of hundreds of pounds or dollars on pink eyeshadow palettes from pat why would we want to do that again and again and again like at some point you have to figure out what you need for your collection what you don't need and if you're a collector then yeah you're going to get them and you're going to probably enjoy them um they're going to perform really well but at some point if you're just a regular consumer of makeup, you're gonna figure out that like, oh, I can just reuse some of the eyeshadow palettes I already have and get a very similar look. And if I told people that I used the new eyeshadow palette, they would probably believe me 
because they look so similar. I actually didn't get one of the more recent Mothership palettes because it actually didn't have any Blitz Astrals in it. Apparently the formula just felt a little bit cheaper and um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Motherships have the four Blitz Astrals right at the end um, on the right hand side. Those are really what make the palette worth it. Like I said, this was before indie brands started coming out with their own amazing versions of such shades and we were only really getting them from Pat. She recently, I guess, decided to stop releasing them. I remember she used to put them into quads as well. Um, she would release quads in the same like black lacquered packaging, but it would just be like four of the Blitz Astrals or a matte with some Blitz Astrals. And I still have some of those quads and they're so amazing for just a pop of something. If you do like an all matte eyeshadow look and you just need a little something, you go into one of those and you pick up a shade and it's just so much easier to travel with if you want to take a blitz astral kind of look wherever you go you can just take one of the quads it's a little bit less expensive as well so you don't have to pay the like premium for some of the mattes if you're just really after the blitz astrals you don't end up wasting as much money whatever it is she actually stopped doing those she started doing just regular quads and then the regular quads started getting really small pans in them i don't know if i can show you guys what i mean so i'm just looking through my pat mcgrath collection now so at first this was the first launch they had of these quads they released three of these and this one as you can see beautiful blue purple gold green they had like a pinky one uh, which was my favorite then they started doing kind of like launches like this uh, where it was just um two mattes like one kind of um finer type shimmer for like the inner corner and then one kind of more dimensional but not a blitz astral by any means and then they started releasing ones where they just look a little bit bland right and like you look at the pans and there's clearly a size difference like these three shimmers look like they could be just color pop realistically can you even tell me which ones are shimmers and which ones are mattes like it's very hard to tell and then you can see the pan size difference over the years so I know these Blitz Astral, so more expensive formula, they're also a bigger pan than this, which is like, just whatever. I think I used this palette like once um, and then I put it away. But yeah, they just started releasing these really bland, like whatever palettes. This red one was actually their most recent launch for the Lunar New Year. And this is the Venus in Fleurs. This is total 5.2 grams, which is a little bit bigger than obviously the, the one before, but it just looks small, right? And once again, like we have one kind of more special shade. This one is a little bit better, but it's like a flat eyeshadow, which isn't the Blitz Astral. The Blitz Astral like sticks out because it's baked. These are definitely pressed. Um, and I mean, they look really nice, but they are just not what we're used to with Pat. And I think that's the problem is there's less of this like, I'm gonna release only three quads and they're gonna be these beautiful Blitz Astrals and these amazing like shades. And now we're just gonna release a quad just whenever we feel like it. I have 12 quads in my eyeshadow collection. I remember when I first started buying eyeshadow palettes, I think by the time I had like 10 motherships, I only had three quads. She's really amped them up because I'm assuming they're cheaper to, to, to produce obviously because they're just quads. And they're quick and easy to think of a, oh, let's just put some nudes and browns and pinks together and just make, they all look the same at this point. And sometimes I look through the website and I think, do I have this one? And I'm like struggling to figure it out because they all look the same. So people started just getting a little bit, I guess, angry. And then instead of releasing some new things, Pat would just keep on releasing these quads, like I said, to fill the blank spaces. People wanted blushes and bronzes and highlights. And these came so slowly. First it was the blushes, then it was the highlights. And then months later, we got the bronzes, which is like, you would want these staples in your collection if you're an MUA. So I just feel like there was um, a bit of an oversaturation of stuff just stuff. It felt a bit color poppy, which I love color pop myself, but some people struggle with like just the amount of launches they have. Whereas color pop is obviously more affordable. So you can keep up with the launches to some, some, you know, level. Whereas with Pat McGrath, if you want to buy everything, you're spending so much money. This one, and then this in the inner corner. See, this is just like a normal shade. It's a beautiful shimmer, but it's just so normal, you know? On the quality aspect of things, she started releasing a lot more stuff in like cardboard packaging. So her holiday big, palettes she released two of them both came in like this big kind of cardboard packaging which usually we have the lacquered ones and then she started doing it more often we had it for the bridgerton collection we had some kind of cardboardy type packaging and then for the valentine's day collection which was this one we also had the cardboard we had the five pans that she would release for the holidays as well which i actually personally love that formula it's a bit different to obviously what pat usually releases but for something a little bit more affordable a little bit smaller the packaging is a little bit more affordable i think they're really good quality yeah she's been releasing more of those and i feel like we all really miss the lacquered packaging like that's really what made pat pat these felt 
expensive. And these are nice for traveling with. They're obviously a cardboard, just very kind of, you know, easy to travel with. But they do break. My five pans are starting to, this is peeling off and it's like opening up. Um, so they're not the best quality. They're fine. But there's definitely less attention to the packaging. Whereas that used to be kind of like a big thing was the packaging being super luxe, super heavy, super expensive. That was like the thing that people were really after with Pat McGrath. Not only was the quality inside amazing, but it also felt expensive. Now there have been some issues with quality as well. And I think we noticed quality going down because pricing has also gone down in a sense. There are sales at least three times a year, up to 30% off. So I really rarely recommend buying Pat McGrath full price anymore. You can get most collections 30% off later on. They also started launching in Cult Beauty and Sephora. And they started being mentioned, well, they started being included in boxycharm which is where brands tend to go to die but i don't know if that's like a confirmed as in like the brand is dying because natasha Denona is also in boxycharm sometimes but that brand is still like up and going so i'm not sure but it's definitely not a great look for a super high per like luxe brand to end up in boxycharm i also noticed with new collections they're not selling out like they stick around even if something's like limited edition and then it will just go on sale later on so it's just not like um not like a coveted thing anymore. Now, there have been some quality drops, like I said. I saw on Beauty Guru Chatter that motherships are now built cheaper. They feel less expensive, yet like the overall weight is different and the packaging looks a little bit cheaper, the lacquered black mothership palettes. So that's obviously something to look into. Um, all the ones I have are pretty much like the more expensive ones. I haven't bought anything in the last few months that is a mothership, so I can't confirm that myself, but apparently they are cheaper now. Like, not price-wise, but they feel cheaper and apparently the there have been some changes made to the motherships. I'm just gonna, I don't have any, well, I think I have one Pat McGrath lip liner and I just didn't get it because that's not the look I was going for today. I'm still waiting for the contour one to come back in stock and it's just not coming back in stock. Which I feel like that's one thing that's been sold out for ages is the lip liner and contour. So I'm just going to use Pillow Talk Medium. My own version of quality issues. These type of lipsticks, these ones, are cheaper than the mattes. I personally don't really like the matte ones. They're like too luxe, too expensive, and they just don't look that good on me personally. But these are more kind of nourishing, dewy, that kind of thing. The packaging is lighter and cheaper. There's less products in them and they're less expensive. These originally came out for the Bridgerton collection and they've now revamped them to just not, just to be kind of like a, a general collection. Ended up buying, I think, two from the Bridgerton collection and they both expired within six months. So that obviously wasn't great. Even though they're cheaper, like I don't want my lipsticks to expire within six months, mainly because it says 18 months on the packaging, but they started smelling crayony six months in, which is when I stopped using them essentially because they don't taste good. But then they relaunched them and they relaunched um, the same shades plus some. And now they do pink and blue for cool tones and warm tone kind of nudes. I was able to rebuy the shades that I liked. And now for the moment of truth, let me smell them because I've had them for a few months now. So let me smell them and see. Yep, crayony again. So these last about six months. Um, if you're able to just buy one lipstick, use it for six months and then get another lipstick, amazing. If you're like me, you're gonna struggle. Yep, these smell gone off again, but I'm just gonna keep them and use them because I'm not gonna rebuy the same shade for the third time if I'm just not using it up. But I love this shade, this is called Negligee. I also have Nude Venus and Nude Romantique too, but Negligee is my favorite. That just tastes a bit rancid, like just not great. Like, it's not amazing. I've actually dug up, I have a whole fetishized mascara. So this is actually one of my favorite mascaras of all time. I love it. And I feel like when these are on sale, they're super worth it. But obviously mascara is kind of just like an expensive thing that you buy and then it expires very quickly. So I don't know if it's worth it for you guys, but I personally love to buy them just on sale. And I think it works super well. So that was my quality issues, the lipsticks. And then we have the star wars collection so pat has actually done a star wars collection kind of pretty early on in her career and it was very well received it was kind of like a smaller collection there wasn't like a mothership it was just like these more cardboardy palettes that she used to have which would have mixed reactions but it was pretty well received at the time i'm pretty sure everyone kind of liked it and some other bits and bobs and she did another star wars collection recently she released some five pans which apparently the quality was a little bit worse than the like other five pans that she had and then she also released a new mothership for it except it wasn't new it was the 
least popular mothership that she has which is always on sale and it never sells out even though i love it like i personally love it but it never sells out and then she just stuck a star wars sticker on top of the palette and sold them like that and people were able to just peel off the sticker and see that underneath it's just probably dead stock that hasn't sold out i feel like the beauty community is about to explode on pat mcgrath labs if you didn't see it monica bell makeup just posted this on instagram showcasing the packaging of the star wars palette and this palette retails for 128 dollars which the midnight sun palette is already existing and it was actually recently on sale for 40% off. I'm so curious if people are able to find manufacture dates on these palettes to see if they're actually using older palettes and just slapping the sticker on top of them and hiking the price back up. If that is the case, yikes. But man, what a letdown because I thought that packaging looked amazing. Which is just such an unluxury thing to do. So I feel like that started the downfall of Pat McGrath in recent times. I feel like since that Star Wars collection, I've seen even more negative comments under Trend Mood and under Pat's posts. I still buy a lot of the launches, but I try to kind of be more realistic. Recently, she announced the holiday collection and people were super excited because it's obviously usually pretty a pretty like big amount of things. It's mainly pinky eyeshadows again, some face palettes with some kind of re-releases, her most popular shades. So for example, for the face palettes, she's finally including bronzers because obviously she's released bronzers now. So her face palettes can have bronzers in them now. And it's the most popular shade. So there's like nude honey in there, which I just used for the lighter ones. And then just whatever the popular one was for medium skin tones and deeper skin tones. Some blushes, some highlights, some colorful mascaras, which I'm always like not into. I just don't really care for them. And just some other random stuff. I'm mainly focusing on the face palettes. I think they look really cute and one of the eyeshadow palettes, but it is just kind of the same shades over and over again. So you can honestly skip this holiday collection and probably use something that you already have from Pat and you'll get same look. I bet it will look somewhat like this. I'm not a massive fan of her lip glosses. So I don't tend, I only have ones and I tend to not really use them. I'm just gonna use the Glossier Red. I honestly could have done something more elaborate today with the look, but I actually have to like go live my life. Um, so this is how I'm gonna leave this look. But yeah, so with the new holiday collection, I think I've noticed that the morale for the company has really gone down. Um, the comments, I mean, aren't great. Um, people are just saying like, yeah, this is like so pat now. This is like what we've seen. And like I said, like I've never missed out on a mothership since I got all of them. I've never missed out on a mothership and I didn't get the last one and I don't feel like I'm missing out. And I heard that the quality has gone down because of the lack of the Blitz Astrals and you know, people, things are just not blending as well. Like I just don't know what is happening to Pat. I just used the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. It's my favorite. And yeah, I just want to know what you guys think about the quality drops, the oversaturation of products, and just the overall negativity kind of towards the brand, which I think is warranted. I get it. Um, I'm not like shading anyone who's being negative. I'm pretty negative uh, because this is my favorite brand. I love buying from them and lately it hasn't bringing, been bringing me as much joy as it usually does and I don't feel like I'm getting my money's worth. So let me know what you guys think. This is just a general chat. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to the bell icon for engagement and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.